Championship under 15, best three of five for the Northeast, winning the first one, 247-237. Look at this South Central team right here with the, with the lavender sleeves. Frank Griffin. Oh. Moving on the edge, again, another indication. Gets it way far left, about three or four boards. I've seen that follow through before on a left-hander. On a left-hander? Ryan Seminelli. Ah, yes, I was thinking Mike Fagan on the right-handed side. That yeah, but Seminelli with that whip that comes up and almost he puts his hand up practically in his face and he can't even see his own shot. That's what it looked like there. Rainy Wells came up light last time. Again this time. So she's been kind of the one bowler who's yet to find that line. But she's been a very good spare shooter, so. Yeah, Nicholas Menendez follows her, and he's a bit further right than she is. So I think those two should be communicating to each other. Just trying to get the feet in the same part of the lane in the target zone as well. 245, she'll convert to the plastic ball for the yeah. spare. Yes, there's a. Pro shop full of balls out there, and so every once in a while the bowlers will put one away from the ball rack. Frame oh, made about to begin in the second game of the U.S. Bowling National Championship under 15. South Central coming off the strike, trying to rally from behind here as Northeast has left the door open a little bit following an open frame in the seventh. Northeast leads one game to none. Matthew Reed. Something unusual. Yeah, everything further inside. More direct line to the pocket. I still think you can go more in and out, left to right. in this game is over. Bowling frames 4-8 and eight in this modified four-person Baker format. And then days up. Last time, really good execution. Fantastic delivery. Left the flat 10-pin. Six-pin came in front. I'm trying to, try to rotate the ball. Pitch more, maybe make the one-on-one one move to the right. This one was up the lane, this one just slightly across the lane off his hand. At least to make well, 6-10. This bear has been haunting to some players lately as well. Chop to 6, slide past the 6 to take off the 10. It's amazing how plastic and urethane can hook at the last moment. Makes me nervous when it's so quiet. It's when you're bowling. Yep. Yeah, back score for the northeast is two twelve. For the southeast it's one to seventy nine. That's gonna change things a little bit here. All of a sudden, that lead has shrunk if we get ready for the foundation. It's, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's unbelievable. 6 10, I think, it, oh, just hit the one in front, and the ball will kick out and take out the 10 pin. He was, he was surprised. The earthing ball just skittish enough, slip past the 6, take the 10 only by itself. So, 191 max score for the Northeast. South Central, depending on what they do here. It's 179, 179 yeah. yeah. There's a lot of suspense here. Beautiful. Rack Ripper. Gorgeously done by Ballinger. It's interesting that the two matches are so different, yet this is going to be a close finish also. We had just the Rockets' red glare in the first game, but this second game has been a lot lower scoring. I'm just curious if six lifts makes them. Everyone seems to be chewing up, maybe just relaxing the jaws, something else to focus on, you never know. Oh, I thought that six 
might collapse onto its end bit instead of look the other way. Watch right here, six pin kid. I think lane 12 is haunted. Might be. But I've seen seven pins left, I've seen flat tens leave. I think uh, lane 12 maybe does have 11 pins in the rack. That's, I feel like that some days. So 179, like I said, max score, 181 max score for Northeast. It does come down to your 10th frame bowler, your number two bowler. Well, the coaches pick their guys. Now, Ethan Gomez has had a little bit of a tough time with this left lane so far. Yeah, like the first time, heavy through the nose the second time. Somewhere in the middle of those first shots is the right way. strikes out, he is going to force James Bennett to get two and nine. Yeah, definitely deeper. It's 18 at the arrows. Runs it out. His last shot where he went high and left the three, six, seven, ten, or excuse me, two, four, seven, ten. He just moved even further that deeper right with his feet. South Central trying to tie this up. One one. Otherwise, the Northeast will be in a position to win it in three straight. Yeah, he went that one too. He knew it off his hand, just inside of his target. Last one, that big moon or banana curve. Send it out to the gutter, send it out left. But the lane just suck it back like a vacuum cleaner, almost pulling the ball back to the pocket. That one was just inside of his target. So 167 is what he's shooting for. So strike and spare will win. For Northeast. It's going to make the Northeast play the 10th frame, though. It's going to matter what James Bennett does. Anything. Strike, nine spare, and eight, I believe, wins it. So a mark is, is definitely needed in the 10th frame for the Northeast. And he's going to make room. It's definitely needed in the 10th frame for the Northeast. And he's going to make room of traffic. He's done the math already. Nine spare eight. Dave. Boy, he has some fantastic ball reaction because that one was just a little bit more in front of him where the last shot got way further right. Again, max amount of room for error with the most room for success. But he has been large and in charge mm -hmm. the entire time he's been up on the approach every single time. performance from James Bennett. Yeah, if we could lay those two shots right on top of each other, the first one you see, just a bit more inside of him, that one. Throw it to the gutter. Pretend there's a wall there. Let it bounce off the back to the pocket. And here is John Banfield subbing in for the last shot, with the Northeast already having wrapped it up. This is always good. Get somebody off the bench. Let them get a shot to stay loose, stay warm, just in case they need to go in.
to nothing lead over South Central in his best three of five here in the Motor City. So one more for the Northeast, and they will walk away with the trophy. They do not get a new car, but the trophy is pretty nice, too. We'll be right back with Game 3. How about the man in that anchor position for the Northeast in the first two games? Huge 10th frames both times. And that's why the Northeast is up 2-0 with critical game three for that trophy. If the Northeast wins this one, they will haul that home. That'll go to Maryland. Then. Maybe it's like the Stanley Cup. Every bowler will get a day with it, you know, spend some time with it. You could put spaghetti and meatballs in it like somebody put this for the Stanley Cup a few days ago. Really? Somebody did that? Yes, and yes, absolutely. Hmm. And Trentler. <laughs> Now we have some changes made. We saw Big John Banfield get up the tall lefty. He has now taken the number three position for the Northeast of Leo Menendez. And Ellie Drescher will check in on the number three position for South Central while Bryant Griffith moves to number four. So to the bench will be Laney Wells for Northeast and Matthew Reed for South Central. <laughs> Seven. Of course, the lanes have transitioned quite a bit since then. Yeah, I know they started game number three, so the pressure will come down to South Central in the tenth frame. Really securing the future. As will they continue to go on? Or will the Northeast win the three games? Ballinger, big save. And the six pins are poorly trained here. They have not yet learned their job is to crash into the tent when the pocket is hit. So, yeah, I think well, she's right there. We'll have to say something when we finish. Yeah, I believe that. That's one of them. No excuses. Cross lane to the tent pin. Easy peasy. So, please start the ball team with nine spare. I don't know if I'm giving much instruction to this guy right now, except it's your turn. I perfectly well said. Just when you're ready. <laughs> exactly. Now, the last teammate made a really good shot, came up high. I would take that information. I'm going to make a move at least three and one. Maybe four and two. Well, he had been striking at an eight or nine pace. He will leave the bucket this time. And again, could be information from the previous player just going high. Leaves the bucket 2 4, 5 8. The Northeast defeated the Southwest, Lower Great Lakes, the South, and New England. They were undefeated on the road to the finals. Benefits of the USBC Youth Membership is the chance to earn college scholarships so you can pursue your dreams. In 2018, more than $10 million awarded in scholarships across the country. Learn more at bold.com slash youth.
Right, John Banfield, we saw John take a shot to conclude the second game after it had been decided, and he is now in the lineup. And that seemed like a pretty smart decision. I was wondering, he spent a lot of time at the bar to really just trying to get comfortable with his grip, his can, drying it off and everything. Got up on the approach and just, boom, one, two, three. Close to shot, good knee bend, really extensive follow through, arm towards the ceiling. Well, he's six foot four, he takes the first 10 feet out of play. I was going to say, if he goes up any higher, he's going to take us over our lights. Yeah. Our first look at Ellie Drescher. Ellie. <laughs> She's out of Fort Worth, 10th grader. I like the mix of the team, Texas and Georgia representation. All the other youngsters from the Northeast, all from Maryland. Northeast down by 14. And Nedda has been controlling the pocket somewhat decently. There's some confusion about where the proper bowling ball is. Again, there's so many bowling balls around in there that spear balls in particular have been get moved around. And... Four players, eight players all together. So eight bowling balls, I think the max the rack can contain is up to 12. Safety factor too, Dave. Just don't want any bowling balls to fly off and fall on anyone's toes. Make sure everybody's safe. So Nicholas Menendez going through his routine. strike the millisecond he let it go yeah further outside about five six at the arrows have there's you not that been, have you not been advising the right handers to do that I, I have telepathy i'm hoping they can hear me they should he's popped a couple of nicely excellent shot there from brian griffith yeah, i do believe lane 12 is more friendly to the south boss Force the follow through. Boom. Adjustment got it right much faster last time. They're pumped up, they're ready to go. Good energy, good spark feeding from one player to the next. So, Jacob Ballinger trying to shut that down. Yeah, it's a good game. Spraying things everywhere. Yeah, it's a good game. Well, South Central's got to win this one, or it's over. And right now they are trading punches in the North East, virtually equal to five. The 19 USA Bowling National Championships on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by Six Lips. Six Lips are the perfect gluten-free, nut-free, chocolatey candy to put you in the right frame of mind and that everyone can enjoy. By Kegel, your lane, our passion, and by... Pepsi, the official drink of boy. And an energetic crowd here entertaining itself while we were away. And they've been very, very entertained by these bowlers. You know, we've had a high-scoring game that was close. We had a medium-scoring game that was close. And this one is completely up for grabs through five. And we bring in James Bennett, who struck 80% of the time this evening. Last time up, left the bucket. Which was a major surprise. And 
doing that coming out of a break. You know, keeping your poise, not rushing your feet, all that stuff that Kelly, I know you've talked about and other pros talk about all the time when you bowl on television. Well, there's something about, you know, you can't physically throw the ball, but you can mentally throw the ball. So even during the commercial break, you see athletes now, they're they're delivering the ball without physically doing it and kind of dry shooting. You know, kind of just dry executing what's going on. So even though you can't hold the ball, you can almost feel it and visualize it and feel it in your hand and what you want to do with it. So another big strike from Ethan Gomez, who has gotten his mojo back. And back and forth we go. Four in a row for the Northeast, three in a row for South Central. And the sub, John Banfield, started it off. He threw that first strike in the third in his first appearance as a starter. A lot of prep time here at the ball return. But when you got on the approach, just boom, gone. A few words of advice for himself, and he's ready. <laughs> Ball oh, really reads quickly. Just annihilated the pins. Even the ball double bounces in the back. It's just got so much energy, it won't stop. I saw that. <laughs> Ellie Dresser. The Northeast is going to jump back into the lead. They are went away from grabbing that U.S. Bowling National Championship under 15 trophy. Good makeable spell right here. Obviously hit the three, the six, just high enough so he carry out that sleeper pin that you were talking about, Dave, the nine pin in the back. I would hook at it just as she's going to. <laughs> That's going to hurt. So it opens up all of a sudden a 26 pin advantage for the Northeast. They are riding a wave right now. Nicholas Mendez, didn't he kick it off with a strike? He struck after Banfield did in the fourth. Five in a row looking for the six pack. Yeah, they went nine spare, open, and perfect after that. Holds the shot. Off his hand, he knew it. Six in a row for the Northeast team. Two sixty-four max score for them. South Central, get your striking shoes on. Yes, they need it. Well, Brian Cricket has done his job. What a great game there. Yeah, two twenty-eight max score for South Central. So they may they threw a 237 first game, it wasn't enough. And then the second game was low scoring. This one not low scoring. And they may get into the 220s as Kelly said, and it won't be enough. Frame a 10th frame for the Northeast. Again, 264 max score. Messenger, oh, it just checked up. And the Northeast yeah. is going to take this in a sweep with an impressive performance. They won big, they won ugly, and then they went big again. Fitting to leave it in the hands of James Bennett, 
It would have been magnificent in the anchor position. Yeah, only one open in all his attempts on the lane. Left that bucket in frame number two, early in game number three right now. Missed it, but backed it up with a pack 10 pins in the pit. He has struck nine times in three games. That will be it for James Bennett. He'll sub out, and Laney Wells will finish this off. I have to say, David, so impressive as all of them held their balance at the foul line. They didn't run anything out, walk off. They stood there until the ball hit the pins. Discipline in their coaching and their skill ability. And a smile from James. <laughs> but she did have one strike. Unfortunately, it was a crossover early on, the first first shot off her hand. But, you know, to Leo Menendez's credit, he didn't really worry about feelings. He made the move to John Banfield, and Banfield went two for two and got this party started with the Northeast with a strike in the third. That was a critical point in this game. You know, it happened to think that the Houston City Division, maybe some of these players will not be returning next year because they'll age out, so... A 2.49 for the victory. So they roll a 2.47, a 180, and a 2.49 to capture the U15 U.S. Bowling National Championship. And we'll get one more good look here at a very talented lefty, Ethan Gomez. First shot off her hand. But, you know, to Leo Menendez's credit, he didn't really worry about feelings. He made the move to John Banfield, and Banfield went two for two. And got this party started with the Northeast with a strike in the third. That was a critical point in this game. You know, we have to think that if you can see the vision, maybe some of these players will not be returning next year because they'll age out. So. A 2.49 for the victory. So they roll a 2.47, a 180, and a 2.49 to capture the U15 U.S. Bowling National Championship. We'll get one more good look here at a very talented lefty, Ethan Gomez. And for the most part, he's had great control over his shots. Had a couple that went off the rails a little bit in game two. could have gotten a little more wind under their sails. They, they bowled, like you said, only losing by 10 the first game. Right in there, head for head almost. The 6-8 split with a high hit was their baddest break out of them all. Recapping game two, just kind of lost the momentum when they changed lanes. And now to shoot 208 and lose to 249. Michigan are celebrating this victory and a well-earned one at that. What a magnificent performance by this team. Hey, grab that trophy. That's yours. And the nice thing about this one, Kelly, is everybody contributed. Indeed, yes. I mean, yes, we talked quite a bit about James Bennett as the anchor bowler, but Banfield on the far left there came in. 
without much practice, really no practice, and came off the bench and performed brilliantly. Vegas to fill on the 10th, throws past two strikes for his frames that he needs to fill. Smart coaching, good communication. Your victories. So our congratulations to those five and to Coach Leo Menendez. Well-earned victory for the Northeast. We'll be back back with more from Thunderbolt when we return. What about Kayla's dad? Did he not? Hello, Gorgeous, gorgeous scenery here in the Motor City. And we had some outstanding bowling. Even though this may have been a sweep, as we take a look at our GoBowling.com moment of the match, it's more Kelly like moments of the match and the anchor bowler, James Bennett, for the Northeast. As you said, 10 out of 12 strikes total. His only opening is when he missed the bucket. Fantastic control and focus throughout the entire match. Great support from his teammates and tremendous bowling for the Northeast. And we'll be back with some final thoughts on this victory for the U.S. Bowling National Championships of your 15 and going to Maryland. Like or the other way around from Canada to the United States, it's that close. Well, we congratulate the Northeast winner of the 2019 U15 USA Bowling National Championships. For my partner, Kelly Kulik, and our entire CBS Sports Network crew, this is Dave Lamont saying so long from Thunder Bowl Lanes in Detroit in association with the United States Bowling Congress. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports.